everyone welcome back to my channel so today i'm going to show you how to make three different types of baskets from 12 by 12 inch cardstock you can use double-sided single-sided it's entirely up to you if you use double-sided you get a little pretty pattern on the inside so it's quite nice now ideal for easter so this is the weave basket and you may have seen my tutorial before i'll just bring it in if this smaller version and if i put them right next to each other you'll see do it that way You'll see they're quite a bit smaller. This is using your 8.5 by 11 or your A4 cardstock. This is 12 by 12, so you can get a much bigger basket to fill for Easter. They're not just for Easter, obviously, they're for all occasions. So I'll just put this one out of the way and bring in this one. Oh, hello. What's going on here? And this is a square box shaped one with a handle on it. Um, and you can see there, this one's quite a sturdy one. So this would be really good for like your Easter egg hunts or like I say, any occasion, be it Mother's Day or birthdays, anything like that. And you could also add cello um, thing to it. And then the third shape we're going to do is this one. So it's got, it's quite a big one. So by comparison, let me just empty the Easter egg one and then I can show you the sizes. If I lay them down like that, you can see all the different shapes and sizes. So they're all a good size. I mean, if I bring my hand in, you can see they're all a good size basket. You can get quite a lot in there. You'd be able to get big Easter eggs in this one. And in this one, this one takes like the, the um, whole egg and all the little bits and they are quite big. This one will turn out to be a four inch square cube. So you can see from that how big they all are. So we'll get started. Oh, I've got that chocolate to look at now. What am I gonna do? I'm trying to diet. Let's move it out of the way. <laughs> don't help myself do I so what we're going to do is start with the um square one I think let's do the square one the cube so let me just bring this so you can see all the details this is the easiest one to do the cube to be honest really really simple one to do so all you need is your score tool which I think is what fell on the floor so I'll just grab another one I don't know where that went who knows so you've got 12 inch square and all you need to do is score it four and at eight both ways. So you turn it round and score it four and at eight. So you've just got two lines there, two lines there. And that's all you need to do for this one. I'll just move this out of the way. And then what you need to do is reinforce those score lines. And it doesn't matter which side you have. Obviously, I always say this. You can have whichever pattern you want on the inside and whichever pattern you want on the outside. Do you know what? This one looks like a grown-up Easter egg one to me because there's some Easter egg shapes in there. Oh! Angle. The angle. So, there we go. Then we've got our square piece of cardstock with our score lines in. And all you need to do is choose two ends, okay? And when you do these two ends, opposites it can be either one if you've got a pattern on there and you think it's going to make a difference then you know choose the one you want so it, i tend to turn it over so i've got the fold coming up at me like that so you can then see better where you're going to cut and you're just going to cut one end on both of these just to make the cube one so if i get that up i can see where the score line when you're using black cardstock, it's quite difficult to see scores. So you can, you probably can't see it on camera. You might be able to. And then turn it around and do the same on the opposite side. So just get that score line so I can see it. And then just cut into that, up to the score line. You've made it in the opposite direction. So you're just cutting up to the score line in the opposite direction. And I'll, I'll do some folds in a minute so you can see what I mean. So what you've got is you've got a big panel going all through the middle there that's folded and not cut. And then on these outside edges, these two have been cut like that. So you can probably see better there, but there's no cuts on this. It's just two opposite ends and they're just four inches. So that's simple enough, isn't it? So far, so good. Then what I like to do is these outer edges, if you bring them in, you see they're going to meet. Now, because you've got score line in this one here, it will come up a little bit short. So the good thing to do with that is where your score line is there, only cut up to your score line. And it's not really 
accurate on how much you start out here but just take like a a triang long triangular piece off of the edge there just taper it and come from the outside edge to the score line so you end up having nothing at the score line but you've got a taper there and then do the same on the other side before you glue it together now if you've got two pieces of the same cardstock you can use your handles to match or alternatively just use cardstock um, that you've got in your stash in the same colour ways. I'm going to use black and red and just make your own handle. So we've done that on both sides. So what will happen, I think I'm going to turn it over, I like it the other way. So what we would do is bring these two in now and just check that we've cut enough off. Do you see what I mean? So now the fold, you don't see the overlapping part on the inside. There you can a little bit. So that's what I'm talking about, what we're getting rid of. But I would go back and change that and cut a little bit more, bit more off. But because of the demonstration time, etc., I'll just leave it as it is. So what you need to do is glue these two together. So you can use any of the adhesives of your choice. But just glue these together. And by the way, what I'll do is that little basket that I made, I will um, put a link in the description so you can make the smaller one if you want. And the other thing I'll do is show the bow, the big bow that I made. I've got a tutorial on how to make those bows really stand out and stay standing out, even though it's only organza. So I'll link those in the description for you. And thanks to everyone that's liked, commented and um, also subscribed to my channel. So just going to put those two together as well. And that's going to hit the score line. So you can't go wrong with this. It's a really, really easy one to do. So we've got our two sides down there. Now, if you wanted to, you could stick these up now and then add your handle with brad so that the handle will swing back and forth. And that way you can put things in and take them out. But I'm going to have a fixed handle and I like to hide them within the flaps of this flap here. So what you need to do is just take um, a black. I've done one and a quarter by 12 and one by 12. And I probably should put it on the red so that I don't get it onto the black. Just put glue along there, or tape, like I say, it's entirely up to you. So pop this one on here, and it doesn't matter if the end's a bit messy, just make it go down through the centre, like that. This is a nice, if you make it out of your own cardstock, and you do use double card, it does make it quite a strong handle actually. And the other thing is if you've got um, single sided paper, but you wanted the handle to be a double sided pattern, just make it twice the width, put a score line right down the center and glue it in half and then stick it together and that will make it sturdier too. So you can measure or eyeball, it's entirely up to you. It's four inches square. So if you line it up on your mat or measure it with four inches square, you know that that's gonna be halfway there and you can just glue it on there. I tend to eyeball most of my work because it doesn't really show, but if you like to be particular about it, don't put it that side, Sarah. <laughs> so where you've got the flap, you're going to be holding the handle. So there we go. Make sure you've got your flap there. What am I like? What am I like? So just stick that in there and hold it just for a second. And then what we'll do is we'll glue all the way while it's in this position. Normally you would wait for each thing to dry before you add another thing when you've got more time on your hands you would do that so there we go so we pop that one over and now you can see the handle has been concealed within the cube so it's nice and neat now turn it over and just put your hand inside of the box and give it all a good rub down get that glue stuck down and then the other way so you fold back this flap out the way and you can curve your handle between your finger and your thumb to get it going so you don't get any creases in it like I say that glue's not dry and then we put some glue just on the edge of the handle again and bring it back in and just glue it fairly central and like I say you can line up etc just hold that there for a second and if you want a shorter handle just put it further down the box edge but it's a nice little basket. I think it'll look really cool. See what I mean about waiting? <laughs> there we go. You will, you will stay there because I'm going to trap you and hold you there. 
So, let's glue that one down. It's a lovely sunny day here in England today. It's beautiful. It's my anniversary as well. Well, mine and my husband's actually. <laughs> it's not all about me. Not all of the time. 34 years. My friend said to me, what is that? Is that China? Or, and I said, no, it's a patience medal. <laughs> so there you go. You've got your little box. How cool is that? So it's a cube shape. Nice and neat, and the handle's all hidden. And you can obviously add things to the outside, decorate it, put tags and messages on there. But that's how we do that one, nice and simple. And then we'll move on to the next one. So I'll just bring my scoreboard back in. And I will just grab some more cardstock. And we'll use this one, I think. Yeah, let's, oh, how pretty is that? So we've got Mother's Day in England on Sunday. So this is going to be a really nice basket to make for Mother's Day. So this one's 12 by 12 still, and I'm going to have this pattern on the outside because I think it's absolutely gorgeous. So I'm going to turn it over this way and just score it four and at eight again. So it's exactly the same scores, four and eight. And then four and eight. Again, we'll reinforce those scores. I probably could leave that there, stop moving it and wasting my everybody's time probably fall over in a minute because i've just literally balanced that by the side of me or little dougie my mousey puppy will come in and destroy he's actually led in his bed outside the craft room at the moment he doesn't like me being in here he really doesn't like it because i'm ignoring him while i'm talking to you guys bless him so, same thing. Now, if you've got, you really, it's better if you use a uh, cardstock that doesn't really have a pattern. It makes it a lot easier. So, it's exactly the same cut, but we don't need to worry about tapering those edges this time. So, all we need to do is cut these four cut lines. So, just down to that score line. You might be able to see it a little bit better on this one. So, you just cut down there and down there. And then again on the other side. Oh, got um, some more videos lined up. I've just had an extremely busy week this week, so I haven't had much time to get into the craft room. Been making the most of the weather, I'm pressure washing and oiling my garden furniture, ready for the first barbecue. How exciting! That's the thing about living in England. When when you get nice weather, it's actually exciting because it doesn't happen all year round, obviously. So what you do with this one, they've got the same shape again. So these two are folded in and this is whole down through the centre. And we've just got the cut lines like this. OK, so what you do with this one last time, we tapered the edges and we made a box. But this time you just go point to point. Now you can, if you want a wider basket, do diamonds like that. So you can do it that way if you want as well. OK, so you can make it even wider, but I find that for centralisation, it's a lot easier. Let's move this one back and you can see we're just lining up these two squares and the top two points. So you can see you only need glue on like a triangular area. So I tend to just take one piece and put the glue on that. And I, I really aren't fuss I'm not fussy about how I do this either. I just do it. And then what we do is we bring that one in and that one along. And then what I do is I let the glue rub against the other side. So that's how I'm getting my glue to travel across the whole thing. And then when they're in situ, I'm going to flip it over. Oops, sorry. Sorry about that, people. Let's move these out of the way so you can see. All I'm doing is just holding down that section there. Just rubbing down. You're still wobbling up there <laughs> hold on tight so there we go so that's that side done and we're going to do the same for the other side so we're going to bring these two in so we'll need to add some glue and i'll just add it to this side because it makes it easier i prefer to do it to the other side but because i know where it's going to go i'll just put some glue along there quite a bit because i move it so i start in at the corner and then i just move that glue you can see it all moving look and it doesn't matter if it pulls, because we're going to be covering that up. You can wipe it away. 
but we will be covering that up and then flip it over and give it a good old rub make sure it's taken and this is where I like to ha add my handle so you can see we've got the basket shape coming so to add the handle I've just cut another piece because I had two sheets of this but like I say you could use green and white that would be really nice or you could take the pink and lilac whatever cardstock you're using just take some of your other cardstock out yeah that's not that's moved never mind it won't show when this is on so same thing with your handle so I'm going to have it exactly the same with the flower pattern on the outside you can reverse it if you want so I'm just going to put glue each end I'm just going to pop that on there on one side and then if you bring up the square you'll see where it overlaps so so it hides the edges of your handle if you want the handle to be on the outside and you want to shape this and die cut it I doubt it'd be quite difficult to get it through a die cutting machine but if you wanted to add panels or anything to it or even shape these then you can do before you do that section actually while we're here we'll just put the glue so you can see there you don't we'll just put glue along the bottom there because there's a hole here so you don't want to be putting glue on that because it will show through so just go up the edges of each side on the three sides and then along the top and then you can just put glue there and then you'll know it's gonna all be covered so again I'm going to flip it over and rub that down get it all down nice and then pull this over make sure it fits within that section I need to go to about there. I'm going to put glue onto here this time. Let's put glue onto there. And if, you, like I say, if you want a longer or shorter handle, you can pull the handle in. You can also add this with brads on the outside. If you're going to do brads, glue this square first, and then put it on the outside and add brads if you want it to swing. And then we'll put some glue on here so remember we don't want to put glue on the base here because it will get into the triangle so we'll put some on this triangle shape and then we we'll just go up the sides and then just all over take more time smear it down get it to the edges like you would normally do and there you go we've got our other one don't forget i'm leaving the link in the description if you want to have one of those gorgeous bows so that's our second basket done and now on to our third one now with the third one you do need to cut this one down so I've gone ahead and I've cut it down already and what you do is you cut it to ten and a half by eleven and three quarters so you've got two sides to this one so this will be the um, eleven and three quarter side and then this is the ten and a half side so on the ten and a half side we'll do that one first and you just take your scoreboard which are balanced just grab that back just take the scoreboard on the ten and a half side okay and then what you're going to do is you're going to score all the way down and keep the strips as well that you cut off your 12 by 12 because they're going to make your handles so ten and a half all the way down and um, we're going to score at three and a half and seven because we put it into thirds so three and a half all the way down and seven all the way down okay so that's the two scores that way turn it around and you've got your 11 and three quarter side and the reason I did 11 and three quarters is because I wanted the strips etc and it, it worked out better it folded better so don't keep it at 12 cut it down to 11 and three quarters because it does make it easy so on this one we're going to do score lines at um, three and three quarters and seven and a half so again we are putting it into thirds but three and three quarters and seven and a half there reinforce those a little bit now on the longer sides on the 11 and three quarters we're going to actually split that so i'm going to mark it with a scoring tool you can go straight in with your trimmers actually shall i show you how to do it with the trimmer because on my other video where i make this basket smaller i show you how to do it with a scoreboard so let me show you how to do it with the trimmer actually let me just grab that and we'll do it that way just for a change so you can see both ways my word i've got into a right old pickle there turn it around that way so what you're going to do is you're going to split this into three 
So you've got three and three quarters. So you're going to cover it like one and a quarter, two and a half and three and three quarters. So it's up to you which way you want to do that. I'll, if you start at three and three quarters there, three and three quarters. Hang on a minute. I think I've scored that in the wrong place, haven't I? Oh, my word. I did. I scored it in the wrong place. I'm just going to get my scoreboard back. Sorry about that, guys. I scored it in the wrong place. I told you the wrong measurement because I was reading it off the other one. <laughs> so it's three and three quarters and then eight. Okay, so three and three quarters and eight. We'll just pretend that line never happened. Three and three quarters and eight. And then you've got your um, shapes that you need. They are slightly rectangular. Okay, so we'll take that away now and then I will get my cutter this time and we'll do it properly. I'll, good job I noticed that straight away. I'm thinking that's not lining up so we'll do the wrong one first so I don't mess it up in a minute so this score line doesn't exist so we're going to go to three and three quarters and the reason I knew is because the cut line has to be at three and three quarters and I thought oh my score line's not there so what you need to do is put it on three and three quarters and then you're going to cut to the score line from the outside to the score line then pick up your cutter and take it to the top. I can't really see because I'm at an angle, but I think I'm right there. So we've got our first cut in. Then we're going to move it down to two and a half. There. Like that. If you were doing this in centimetres, you'd do a 30 by 30 square, and then you'd obviously be cutting it 10, 20, and 30, and then um, into thirds. Like that. So that's our second one. So you can see there we've got our first little tab. And then there's only one more cut to do, and that's it, one and a quarter. It's a lot easier to do this um, with a paper trimmer than scissors, if I'm honest, because with scissors, you, you, if you score, then you do get the score lines, and you have to cut dead on the score line just to be very accurate. And this just comes out accurate on its own. So you can see there, you've got three tabs, okay? So you get three tabs at each end, like that. And we need to do the same on the other side. So I'm going to spin it around. So do the same thing. So start at three and three quarters. And there should be a score line there if I scored that one right. I never redo a video if I've gone wrong, by the way. I always show you how to correct it. I mean, with this one, I would have to start again because you've got that. Unless you didn't mind having that score line in there and you could cover it with paper. But it would be better to um, probably start again with that one. And then we take it to two and a half, like that. So just up to the score line, lift it, score line again, up to the top, and then one and a quarter. Do you know as well, I've only just started working in inches because I did a survey on my Facebook page to see what people use. And they either said inches or both. Only three people answered centimetres. So I figured I'd need to go to centimetres. Centimetres are a lot easier to do calculations with. I'm really not used to all this seven eighths and I don't even know what you call them. 30, because it's 30 seconds, isn't it? Is that what you say? 30 seconds? I don't know. It's, it's all alien to me, but I'm aiming to please and get it done for the majority. So you can see we've got like a rectangle shape here, not a square. And then what you need to do with this is I like to cut this down half an inch. Now on the smaller one, you don't need to do it. But with this one, because of the shape and the size, because I've made it the maximum I can, I should have kept my trimmer in. This, these two centre flaps here, what you need to do is get these out of the way, fold them out of the way, and then just take half an inch off. Just cut off half an inch. So I'm going to line it up this way. So I'm just lining up to the half inch mark. And I'm just going to whisk half an inch off of that side and flip it over. And if you get these out of the way, you're not going to accidentally cut them. So I just fold them back. A little bit annoying, I suppose. And just put that on half an inch. And use your um, lines here to make sure that you've got your cardstock straight. So just at half an inch there and take that bit off. Got those two little pieces there and then what you need to do is we bring these in so you can color these edges like i did in the other one so it shows you um 
where the tabs are it enhances it you could also do oh hello you could also do matting and layering so you could use your strips of cardstock and just to get a difference you could just have a little border around there and that would look really nice i think but we're just gonna for speed we're just gonna do this now what i like to do is i like to bring my point to the top there so it meets there so we're meeting the point there and then I'll do this side. So I'm literally just going to weave it. So I'm going to put those two together like that. So I just find my glue. Just put some glue on the ends of these two tabs. Like that. Should probably put it up that one because that's the one that's going to matter. And I just like to line it up because that way you don't have to do any measuring of where it goes. And you just put the two points like that we just put them together and give it a squeeze so we've just got the first two there so hold that in place for a second and then we do the second two second pairing so you can put more glue along here if you want to you can get it more secure onto the side but i tend to only do the ends so we went that side that time so we'll go this side again just go there and then there so i'm making them always hit the top so they're always level with the top and then they're symmetrical you see so that's out like that let's do it again bring it down and that one down don't glue yet i'm not ready down to there and then that one down to that line and then give it a squash and then that way we know that it's symmetrical each side of the basket it's going to work and then finally, we're going to do that one. Can you see, you get that nice little curve going down. If you didn't cut it off, sometimes what happens is the square will come out and protrude and it just looks a little bit strange. So with this one, I'm going to be a bit different. I'm just going to put glue on the bottom of this one. And then in the top of that point there. And then just go down like that. Hold it. And then hopefully this one will hold glue along the bottom just go in like that so I'm hold it down there firmly hopefully it won't move while I do this side so I'll do it from this angle move these out of the way so you can see that I've got the three strips each side so the first one and to be honest look that score line that I accidentally made doesn't even show so you could um, carry on. I thought you'd probably have to cancel and start again, but to be honest with you, I think you can get away with it. It's not a mistake I made before, so I didn't know. Now I do. Learn by your mistakes, don't you? We're all human. And then pop that one on there. And then again, line it up to that section top line here Let's hold it in place I'll put the glue on the other next two while I'm doing that glue along there and glue along there this one came in first so you make like a little weave and you could obviously put glue all the way down there you could even put glue onto here to make sure you're capturing everything And bring that one to there, like that. Make sure this is flat. And then finally, this one. Put some glue on there again. Don't put it right across the top line because it does make um, a little bit of a shape, this one. So I just go down to there. Then pull this one over. And to there. Got that nice little V shape to finish off with. It's quite a lot of glue on there to take. So then it's the handle. So like I said, I had strips left over. Actually, I'm just going to go and grab the other strip. I'll just pause. The reason I grabbed the other strip was because it was only a quarter of an inch. And I thought, hmm. And I did cut this down. So this was one and a half inches. Or did I? And I cut it down to one and a quarter. 
so because i cut it down i ended up with two three quarter inch strips so if you wanted some decoration on there you could easily just add it like that this one's a little bit shorter because this one was cut first but you could also you know add a bit of interest to it if you wanted to but i'm going to um just leave it like this but i might go the other way actually and i think it might look quite nice if um she says when she's got not got it out or anything i'm going to round the corners that was easy to find how about that a bit unusual in this room so i'm gonna just put that in and just around the corners just give it a bit of interest i think this one would be nice with brads on it actually because that way you could swing the handle on it and it's also something else to decorate with other than your flowers etc so just put some glue on the edge and um, just pop that on there so you see it's quite i might leave that weave because it looks nice just cover up the top section so i'm just going to do that and i could add a little bit more glue actually i'll put some up the top there because otherwise it won't be fully attached make it up as i go along it's what i usually do pull it up a little bit more there we go it looks quite nice like that get it straight so you can see if you had brads this handle would swing which would be really good for storing as well. And then on the other side, I need to do the same. So I'll just put some glue on the top here and then on the base of the handle, like that. And then just bring that down to there. So it's a matching pair. And there we go. How lovely is that? So we've got a really pretty basket, weaved basket. Um, quite a large box too. You know, when you look at that, there's six, about six and a half inches wide on the top and deep wise it's about three and a half probably three at the center so it's you know it's a substantial size box as you can see Ta -da! all right then thanks guys thank you for watching and i'll see you again soon bye bye